Okay, this, um, this is a, my second last poem. This is a long one called Time Slip. Um, it was inspired by two things. One was a contest to write a poem 999 words long. I didn't win, but I still like my poem. Uh, what a judge is knowing, right? And the second thing is, I ran across one of those odd little bits you see in the back of a newspaper condensing some recent scientific theory or discovery, and this one said, quantum physicists argue that linear to clock time is an illusion, and that time slip, which is an outbreak of the past in the present, is possible, even probable. The moment turns, a tumbler, like you, rolling a car over again, about to break a power pole, shut off the neighborhood, wondering in that elastic instant that suspends lives, whether you will survive this crash too. Opaque future walls up vision. The big-handed past insists you and your choices and your family drove you again to this moment of suspension. Time slip. Anxious to see anything that looks land. I tumble down from the crow's nest. No albatross is around, and as my bare feet spin in North Atlantic gusts, I can't decide whether I die on a splintered deck, simulacrum of land, or in the glacial sea. I never learned to swim. Time slip. Should we sign the death warrant, bother to write a suicide note, keep on producing poems hardly anyone will hear, when the sun has only four and a half billion years of hydrogen left diffusing the helium, and then collapses laughing as the universe in sympathy retracted into the unimaginable mother point in which all lines lie coiled. Time slipped. But I was so much older then, I'm younger than that. No. <laughs> when they begin the beginning, what will be maybe? Should all acquaintance be sweet for charity? Daisy, Daisy, give me your onset due, for the days are for sure past. They're no longer foregone. Do change the channel. The channel changes you. Time slip. Consider the sneeze. God bless you signals the black death, followed by rings around the rosy boo-boos and extinction. Farewell, my village. Let us eat moldy rye bread so we can hallucinate angels descending. We are born to die, to write, to sing, is to rebel against this terrible, interminable sentence. Seize life as a sneeze that blesses itself after the long silence of suspense, before the next long silence ends. For doth not sun dance attendance upon the stolid earth as it must? And is not man one scant rung below the angels? And must not all living things have a stable abode? Time slip? No, all is relative. My stillness makes you move. I, it's just a form that for me is perceived from your position and velocity. Tiring of the sight on the Mobius striptease of space, shredding its time where I approach the speed of light, thus slowing time and making infinite my mass. Holy heavy, like Jenny Craig run backwards at high speed. Or the highwayman come riding up to the old inn door while the highway was out riding away from him. Time slip, your car turns, falls, you stare down at the blue sky. Time slip. Strike the tambour, baudran, daitaiko, strum the sitar, guitar, zither, alud, the lute, dance, feet that pace off space. Behold, they keep time penned and panning. We cannot wait to begin the beguiling dance, or for steps to end. For joy of the dance is the unanticipated but apt final move. Floor segueing up to me to stare his feet just as he comes down the wall. Time slip. How oh, we laugh, blue with woe, lying under the sacred oak, ripping drew tooth. Because we're also sipping fine tea and wearing silk, about to meet a real princess, and we're collaborating on a courtly mask that will lampoon the lace, the lice under lace and perfume. <laughs> Time slip. Well, we're trying to make this thin earth and northern sun pronounce together just one word, potato. Just say it, damn it, and we will eat the word to save us from joining that soil again <coughs> sooner rather than later and maintain this laughable life of red knees and red hand, praying only for the word potato. Son, don't say pa, potato. <laughs> Time slip. Thanks to all fornicating ancestors who's lust imagined us. Time slip. 
How we laugh as the pale beard spilling out of the great boat, poles waving cloth, babbling incomprehensibly and planting colored cloth on a pole as if it said something to the land, which bears the insult of silence because it understands how a reaction has an equal and opposite reaction. What they take from the land will be taken from their children's children. The passenger pigeon, the tides of buffalo, the deep green hushed forest they take will be taken from their children. They are taken from themselves. Too childish to know that. Time slip. As the earth and sky revolve, we know not when we'll die, but this moment that recycles the past recalculates what's to come. Let us laud the invention of Marconi and cheese's thousand varieties, the telescope bringing the birth of stars, microscope opening the worlds we are, Jimi Hendrix wailing to all ages with a crybaby fuzz and lots of sustain, the pill and condom and saxophone vaccine, the birth of a nation of movies, showing us how time is edited by memory into flux and stills. Praise also a Korean monk carving backward sutras into a block of hard grain wood so a whole page can print at once. Gutenberg finding true gold in lead hot to become Gothic text. Time flunk. Let us also laud the invention of time, a most excellent illusion, because what could we have done before it? There'd be no millennial party hats. We'd have little to count on, no four four to keep, no time to slip away like the present, because we are born to die. Let us divide life up into the most interesting units, sixes, twelves, lunar phases, to draw the audience's eyes away from the big one, the unit we remain in, on, tumbling towards silence in the white light just before the power goes out, counting on one finger, truth, one, zero, live, die, time, slip. Who would you like to call? <laughs> <laughs> the car landed on its side. You, because the seatbelt didn't give, survived. I'd like to call you. Time slipped. The poem has not yet begun. We apologize for any inconvenience. Yet, old bag of blood read over. This poem has long been over. Why do you bail rebooting fate as? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to close with a, a short, uh, funny piece, which is mildly political, and you have a role in this. So um, what you all have to do is, how many of you remember watching the show Cops? And the theme is it? Good. So what you have to all do is go, bad boy, bad boy, and what you're going to do, what you're going to do when they come to you, at least twice. So can we try it? Bad boy, bad boy, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? One more. Bad boy, bad boy, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Rob Ford, Rob Ford, what you gonna do? No time to drink another brew. Rob Ford, you're an addictive joke. Time to go back to a toga crack. And that's why I say, give me chow now. Give me chow somehow. Rob Ford, Rob Ford, you're driving drunk, talking black like a spray-painted skunk. You're snoring in a bed of lies. Only get up to restart the high. Go back, go back, get crack and do a toga coke. We don't need no more trauma from your sick photo joke. Give me Olivia, I need the chow now. He's a liar and a criminal, but he thinks he's phenomenal. He's Rob effing Ford. In an E major song, he's the F minor chord. He's Rob effing Ford. Zero tolerates illegal drugs, and Lenny he sees gets big hugs. He's Rob effing Ford. Today, some say he's a great mayor, but tonight he's my nightmare. Thinks life is just NFL time because he started on the 30 yard line. Never knew what it means to be hired up because he's Rob effing Ford. Rob? You're an anthology of hookers and crooks and bubble clocks. Come on, Rob, take the walk out of here. In or out of your underwear. Be a trooper in a drunken stupor. I don't matter. Just a train wreck. And in this city, you're the pain in the neck. Rob Ford, Rob Ford, what you going to do when the cops finally arrest you? Yeah. <laughs> it's based on a dream. Um, I actually had a funny conversation was it with you about Irving Layton, who said, don't write about your dreams. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he said that was a bad thing to do, but I, I thought the game was actually well worth writing about. The artist awakes from strange dreams. Around her, a white, featureless blank. All she has is a Venus 2D pencil. She presses its point lightly against her forehead and awaits inspiration. 
She draws a series of lines meeting at 90 degrees. Obediently, a small room forms around her. She roughs out a window, puffy cumulus clouds, a bare maple visible through it. They appear. Lonely, she sketches a dog, nothing fancy, a mutt with dark, spiky fur. He stands, tongue lolling, and hops awkwardly towards her. Because of the angle, she had drawn only three legs. Quickly, she adds another, and her new friend bounds up, licking her face. She fills the bare room with a wall of books, each with a mysterious slash along the spine where a title should go. Then, she indicates a fabric hanging, stark in black and white, and finally, an oval mirror with an ornate frame. Her reflection mirror moves, tracing each of her actions with its other hand. She draws a deep breath and adds a door. When she completes the china knob with its tiny highlight from the window, the door swings open. Beyond its frame stands a dark form, nothing she could have imagined. Into its open mouth disappears all that she had drawn, including the dog, sucked up with a woof of surprise. She points her pencil like Harry Potter's wand at the figure, but it vacuums images from the graphite tip before she can complete them. Then she wakes up, maybe for real this time. She turns her head, unsettled by the force of the dream. Beside her on the pillow are two halves of a Venus, a 2B. <laughs> <laughs> Driving home after jazz, the radio seeks suitable sound, and here is Mr. Mojo Rising, singing L.A. Woman, hashed up by rolling clouds, other stations fighting for the same frequency, storms on, fists and cold fronts, cheery news of disaster, a spooky dark staccato led by Dionysus in leather pants, oh, to the city of night, oh, cut the car, the songs go strut through the sky, Riders on the storm, but here start static, crickets applaud with thin violins. This too shall pass. <laughs> <laughs> and in case you're worried, that was a John Mellencamp tape, so nothing serious. <laughs> Okay, I need to do the work school. Pencil. Catch your breath. Yeah, it's hard one coming.